Hey guys, how's it going? So some of you have been asking me about shotguns lately. And if you're a long time gun owner, maybe you're just looking to pick up another one or two. Or a lot of new gun owners are looking to get their first gun and in many cases, people go with a shotgun. So I'm gonna show you three budget shotguns, just a real quick overview. And I'm gonna be going out to the range with these probably this weekend so I can do some follow up shooting videos if you guys are interested. First of all, I want to thank my friend Frank. He went out and bought these recently from Supermatch GNA, and he was nice enough to share these with me and for all of you. So let's take a look and see what we have here. So the first one is the Mossberg Maverick 88. This is a 12 gauge, and this is the security model. So let's open this up and have a look. So the Maverick 88, these have been around a long time, and they're actually a tried and true shotgun. And in today's crazy gun price economy coming in at around 250 these are going to be one of the cheaper options now as i said earlier the mossberg maverick these are kind of mossberg's economy line if you will made by the same company and these are actually made in the usa or at least assembled in the usa they do contain some foreign parts mainly coming from mexico but they're assembled here and they're actually pretty good guns I've never actually owned one of these, but I know a lot of people who have a lot of friends and they've had good luck with them. Now there's many configurations of these. This one being 12 gauge, three inch chamber. Of course, it'll also shoot two and three quarter inch shells. This being the security model, it has a nice little short 18 and a half inch barrel. So this makes for a nice compact package, polymer stock. It's very lightweight has a blued barrel that <laughs> looks really good. A nice supple recoil butt pad, really soft rubber with like a honeycomb. Checker in here on the grip. And yeah, the gun shoulder is very nice. It has a front bead sight that's very easy to pick up. Five rounds in the tube. And yeah, it's a pump action. Kind of standard fare. I know you can replace some of these parts with the Mossberg 500 parts. Some of you guys that are Mossberg experts can chime in, but I believe the barrels are compatible and a few other things. Now, you are going to get a few economy things with a cheaper gun like this. Namely, we've got this plastic trigger housing. But, I don't know. I think it'll be alright. The other big difference between a Mossberg 500, which is almost the same as this, is you usually have the rear receiver tang safety that slides up and down. This one features the cross bolt, which is going to be very similar to if you have a Remington 870 Express. That'll kind of be natural for you. So some of you are going to like the little cross bolt there. Some of you would rather have it up on the tang, and that's kind of a personal preference, to be honest with you. This brand new out of the box, the action on it feels nice and smooth. Plenty of grip on the fore end here, which is also made out of polymer. Now another thing with these, they do have dual action bars. One here, come over to the left side of the shotgun, and you'll see another action bar right there. And I know that's a feature a lot of people talk about, whether it has one or two action bars. So yeah, Mossberg. Maverick 88. Tons of aftermarket stuff you can get for these guys. They're kind of a good little entry level shotgun and like I said been around a long time and something I would probably recommend. Especially in today's day and age it's kind of expensive to buy anything right and I don't know I told my friend this was a good buy for 250 bucks. Give you guys one more look there. I do like the bluing on the barrel very nice. Simple brass bead sight which is just fine with me that's how I learned how to shoot a shotgun but I have a couple more budget ones that are a little bit fancier so we're gonna put this away for now and grab something else here's another one that a lot of you guys have probably heard of and this is the Stevens model 320 security now this is gonna be my first time looking at this exact one but I've actually owned a Stevens 320 security for Oh, probably about seven or eight years now. I did take a peek in the box, though, before I started doing this video. And this one's a little newer than mine. A couple minor updates. So let's take a look at the Stevens. So the Savage Stevens 320 Security. These have also been around a while. And just like the previous Maverick 88, there's also lots of configurations. 
This one features a 18 and a half inch barrel, tube fed, five plus one. It also has three inch chamber and of course two and three quarters. So pretty similar as far as that goes. But these shotguns are quite a bit different actually, as you can see. This features a rotating bolt. This is a tried and true design that's been around a while. Savage Stevens, there's been a merger over the years. And in fact, this gun isn't actually made by Savage or Stevens at all. It says imported by Savage Arms Inc. Manufactured by Sun City Machinery Co. Limited and PRC. PRC is another way of saying People's Republic of China. So this is a Chinese shotgun that's imported by an American company that used to make a lot of budget shotguns. So we'll take a look at that for you guys right there. Now, instead of the blued finish like the Maverick 88, this has more of a matte finish. They don't really specify what it is. I don't know if this is a paint. Doesn't really quite feel like a parkerizing, but matte finish, whatever the heck that means. But immediately you can see this has a pistol grip, which is actually pretty nice, especially with a 12 grade, you know. Helps you control the recoil a little more. It also has a very soft butt pad on here. This one has a fixed sling mount in the rear and a sling swivel on the front of the magazine tube here. So pretty standard there, which is nice. The release for the pump, if it's empties, on the left side, kind of in an awkward spot, I would note. Let me flip this around so you guys can see what I'm talking about. The way the pistol grip is, I can't get my finger quite up there. So if I want to release the slide action there, I have to kind of come over here and push here. It's kind of an awkward motion. Push up, and then I can release. So I don't know. See, I can't really use my left hand and get over to here. There's no way to do that, right? I can't really get my hand here. So I kind of have to... That's only if the firearm's empty. If you're cycling in new rounds, you're not going to run into that problem. So not a big deal. But I would say it's kind of an awkward spot for the release with this pistol grip basically blocking you. I mean, I can kind of reposition my hand all the way down here and press up. And maybe that is the proper way to do it. But you have to be pushing on it at just the right angle. And it's just a little bit awkward. But hey, not a big deal. This also has dual slide bars or action bars that are basically hidden by this handguard. So you can see the one there. If you look in on an angle. And the other one right there. Now the sights. Whereas normal shotguns usually just come with a bead sight. This has a ghost ring in the rear. See if you guys can take a look at that. Now this is going to be adjustable. There's two different adjustment screws. Followed by a fiber optic front sight that's protected by two ears. Now the way I you know, was taught to shoot a shotgun and the way I'm kind of most comfortable is just with the bead on the front. I can kind of follow target a little easier that way however if you guys are used to shooting a rifle and like to look through the peep sight that fiber optic front sight very very easy to pick up and if you're a rifle shooter i think you're going to find this really comfortable it weighs a little bit more than the maverick 88 but not a whole lot and it's still a pretty handy little short compact 18 and a half inch barrel shotgun so yeah nice little 12 gauge it is made in china some of you aren't going to like that some of you aren't going to care, just figured I'd let you know. But yeah, we'll take this out and shoot it soon. The Savage. Stevens. What was the name of it again? I'm trying to remember the name of the company. Sun City Machinery Co. LTD. <laughs> All right. I have one more that's a little bit fancier yet. And by the way, this comes in at about... 300 so not too bad for all of you import fans i've got something pretty cool to show you and for all of you import haters this is especially for you too because i'm sure you'll like the video anyways so this is the tristar cobra 3 and yes it's made in turkey and it's kind of unique so let's get this thing open here and check it out next one is the tristar and like most of these, there's several versions of this. This is the Cobra 3 Force. 
and I hate to say it, like most Turkish made firearms, this one comes with the most bells and whistles for the money. This one's also just under 300 and if you guys have ever bought a Canic pistol, for example, you know what I'm talking about, the overall package, even like the PX9 and many other Turkish firearms. So this one's actually pretty loaded and it has a couple cool features. So same thing, 12 gauge, three inch chamber, also two and three quarter obviously, 18 and a half inch barrel, so a nice compact package. Pump action, but it's kind of unique and I'm gonna show you that in just a second. This features a rather large butt stock, pretty long length of pull on this soft recoil pad that's actually kind of a nice design with that v-shape i like that a very soft rubber supple grip that does have three finger grooves in it that happens to fit my hand just fine actually features a cross bolt safety this model has a picatinny rail on top and comes with a adjustable rear peep sight you can see the ring right there also, it has a rather large, feels like it's steel, front sight tower with a fiber optic. So just like the last one, this one's going to be a lot like sighting in on a rifle. Very easy to pick up that nice bright red fiber optic. So yeah, if you like shooting a rifle, you're going to be right at home. Also features a Picatinny rail underneath the pump for your flashlight. Vertical grip, whatever you would want up there. Now, here's what's pretty cool. The other ones I showed you were fixed chokes. This barrel's threaded, and it takes the Beretta Benelli style chokes, with this one having a choke muzzle brake on it. So, check that out. Brakes right there, and these are gonna be interchangeable. Lots of options for these. Features a sling mount in the front, sling mount in the rear, on the butt stack, so that's pretty nice. Now, I was kind of complaining about the release for the pump, for the slide action on the other one. This one's actually right where I would want it. Let's see if you guys can see that there. Right in front of the trigger guard, where I can grip the shotgun a little more naturally. Just push my forefinger up there, and now I'm going to be able to release, right? Another thing I noticed that's a pretty cool feature on this. This has a chrome-lined chamber, chrome-lined barrel, so... Definitely not going to complain about that, especially if you're shooting quite a bit of steel shot. That chrome's going to be a lot more resistant to wear than just the regular untreated steel, right? Now, here's the cool part about this. Normally, when you pump a shotgun, you pump it to the rear, okay? Pump it forward to chamber a shell, and then repeat. So you actually have to manually push forward and back. Check this out. We're going to rack it to the rear, and I'm just going to let go. This has a spring assist. There's a spring coiled all the way around the action here where I'm going to have to get the hang of this and I am going to take these out to the range and see how I like it, but it's supposed to be a lot faster. So you just would, you know, pull back, rack the shell in there, pull the trigger, and go. You guys might have seen these before and they're... It's a pretty neat concept. Definitely let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Do you think this is a pretty cool idea? Or is it going to mess you up because you've been shooting the conventional style? I don't know. I don't really think it's going to mess me up, though, because if I try to just force it forward, it's going to go forward. It just makes it go nice and easy. Yeah, it has a nice long grip. I would say the grip portion is a little bit far out on the pump. So if you look at the actual forend here of this shotgun, it's extremely long. I'm going to guess by looking at it at least 15 inches. My arms aren't extremely long. I feel like I want to hold it right here, okay? And it's okay. I can pump it from there. It's quite the reach for me to reach all the way out to where the stippling is. But hey, different people are built different ways. But I will note this is very long. Now, they're hard to see because of this really long shrouded handguard pump here. But this also has dual action bars. Let's see if we can get it to pick that up. It's probably going to be hard to see due to the contrast. There you can see one hiding in the shadows there. And then also on top. So this does have the dual action bars just like the rest. Yeah. Take a peek here. 
you guys can see that shiny chrome there in the chamber and the chrome does go all the way down to the end of the barrel tristar I'm not surprised that it's full of features being a Turkish gun. I know some of you guys love firearms from Turkey and you appreciate the value. Some of you hate everything to do with it and that's fine. I just want to do this video showing you guys several budget options that are currently available today. Now all of the three I just showed you were quite a bit cheaper two years ago, three years ago. But in today's times these seem to be three of the most budget friendly 12 gauge shotguns that were available they're all kind of in the same family right five plus one three inch chamber pump action this one kind of having the most bells and whistles and definitely having that unique action here i'm going to go out and shoot the all three of them right let me know down in the comments which one's your favorite which one you'd like me to maybe spend a little more time with give some follow-ups and do a more detailed review and for those of you that have stuck around this long, I'm going to pull something out that I recently got used, and it was budget, and hold on one second here. I'm going to have a little fun here, and here's what we're going to do. You're going to guess what this is, and if anybody guesses, or a few of you do and want a follow-up video, I'll do it. Now, this is an oldie but goodie. This one's been modified a little bit and a little bit rough shape, so I picked it up for a buck fifty just recently here. So old-fashioned <laughs> budget shotgun it's actually pretty cool and believe it or not I'm kind of excited to have this I've always kind of wanted one of these this was a transition model they did not make it very long there's two model numbers there's the exact model number of this shotgun then there's another one that's very similar kind of just depends on the year very slight changes so I'm gonna zoom in on some of the markings and if you guys guess either one I guess I'll give it to you, but this is a Remington. It says Remington Arms Co. Ilion, New York. It has a patent date of, they used a really small type set back then, guys. February 3rd, 1903, and May 18th, 1905. And this particular example is almost exactly 90 years old. I think about 89 years old to be specific. So that'll give you guys a few clues there. Remington. There we go. I think it picked up that roll mark nicely. You guys can look at the patent dates there. This is also a 12 gauge pump action. And I believe this one's also a slam fire. Now, if you'll notice, this is not a sideways eject like the other ones I showed you. This is going to be a bottom eject tube fed shotgun. Now, this barrel, I believe, was cut down by somebody at a certain point. Still over 18 inches. It's all good. Externally threaded, okay? So don't let this throw you for too much of a loop. If someone knows something special about this, let me know. But at this point, I'm about 90% sure this is something somebody did aftermarket. Now, if somebody's an old shotgun guru and says, no, 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 that was a special run they made like this, with this choke on here let me know i'm always learning something every day and that's what i love about the people that watch my videos you know you guys are so friendly and so many of you are a lot smarter than me there you go there's a picture of the slide bar the action bar there remington trademark most of the gun is blue this appears to have been painted at one time and it's almost worn off it says mod so it's a modified choke no doubt let me know if you guys know anything about this. And I know what model it is, but I'm going to make you guys guess. But if you know anything that's up with this muzzle device, choke, let me know. I think it's just something that somebody did. But yeah, I appreciate you guys watching the channel. If you'd like to help out, there's links to help the channel down in the description. My Amazon link. It costs you nothing, but it does help out a little bit. And most of all, I just appreciate you guys being here and hanging out. So... Thanks, Frank, for letting me borrow those shotguns to show everybody. And I'll take this out and shoot it, too. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And have a good one.